I have one time to look at that. Okay, here we go. We're going to start it, guys. All right, I'm going to be calling a special meeting of the village board of July 21st to order. Roll call, please. Uh, President Jay Linkfeld? Here. Uh, Trustee Brosius? Here. Trustee Lucius? Here. Trustee Brunner? Here. Trustee Hartman? Here. Trustee Pomakowski? Here. Trustee Kalabeter? Here. All right, let's stand for a question. Yes. Yes. United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, one God, indivisible, with liberty and substance for all. Okay, we have public comment. This is an opportunity for anyone to address the village board on any issue. Please observe the time limit of three minutes. Uh, the village board encourages input from residents that may not discuss or act on any issue that is not duly noted on the agenda. Those wishing to speak during the meeting are encouraged to register prior to the start of the meeting. You may also register your comments by sending an email to the administrator ahead of the meeting. We did not have any uh, registration for uh, all the comments. All right, and I thank everybody on as part of it. Uh, that's, that's correct. And then we have uh, Kevin from the Middleton Times. Okay, perfect. All right, uh, report for village village officers. Uh, I'll go first. The only thing I have is uh, next meeting will be getting the set. Uh, and then we'll be discussing it on uh, August meeting. And we'll get the uh, operating one in August and we'll discuss it in September. So if there's an item that you would like, you need to talk with the department head um, to see if it could be included or if it's included in the budget or you'll have to fill out a supplementary uh, form and hand it in. Um, so we have that time to discuss it versus doing it at the very end. So, so they have, when they come to you, they have 30 days to put each one to discuss with uh, the department heads or with uh, the item on. That's all I have. I used to say if last couple of them put it in out there if they ask and I ask one that's kind of one that's gonna be happening on August sixth before the seven. I can be done thanks for the whole work. And then site rent is gonna be the six and seven also a little bit this year, there's flooding bags and yards and volleyball and so forth. But um just a full standard of all of them. If you have any questions about it, reach out to me for the done. Any other trustees? Uh, the July 11th dedication and Franny Gore's appreciation was well attended. It went very, very well. I um, appreciate what you and Michael and all of you stop by. It was a good dedication. It was a great day. All right. Bill is the minister. Bill? I've got um, something to add. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, it's okay. No worries. Um, the aspiring anti racist across plains in conjunction with the Middleton Equity Connection is going to be hosting a, a four week series with Rudy Bankston surrounding building community around issues of equity. So, sort of connecting the two communities that we all share a school district with. Um, and we'd like to invite the village board and any members to join us if they're interested. Uh, it's Thursday, August 5th, Thursday, August 12th, Thursday, August 19th, and Thursday, August 26th. It'll be via Zoom. Um, and we're going to get the registration materials out to all the village board members if they're interested, uh, but also just anyone in the community um, can actually join the surrounding area. How long are they for the day or night? Yeah, it's a seven to eight thirty, and that's a hard, a hard eight thirty. We, we typically end on. Um, so I'll get that information out to everybody, and then we'll be posting it through the uh, the Catholic library here as well to try and get the word out. And we're also on Facebook as well. You can find us there. Were, were you going to be recording any of those at all, or do you know? I don't think so, um, but we are having some planning meetings coming up, so we can definitely discuss that as an option. We're going to culminate the events uh, in this in this series with a, a, a picnic at Fireman's Park to bring these groups together for the first time face-to-face -face since COVID, 
and that will take place on September 16th. Um, so it should be a very, very good, interesting time to meet members of the community and to talk about issues of race and equity. So thanks. All right, thank you. Bill? Yeah, uh, so just following up on uh, Creek Crossing at St. Francis, we did have a Creek construction meeting uh, yesterday. Uh, it was a good meeting and discussed uh, logistics uh, timeline of construction. Uh, so I believe they are looking to mobilize this coming up Monday. Uh, you will see uh, heavy equipment out there along with erosion control. All of the construction uh, was will be accessed off North Hill Road, so we should not expect any construction um, um, traffic off of Lothenburg Boulevard at all, um, except for when they break through uh, to that section of the road. Uh, just to follow up on, on previous email, the uh, erosion control and stormwater uh, uh, maintenance plan was reviewed by uh, our engineers and public facilities um, and the test results from them digging additional pits uh, to make sure that, that the water would infiltrate at a rate that we desired at 90 percent. Um, we're comfortable with that. Uh, we'll be issuing a letter of that uh, stating that to the creek crossing here uh, in the next couple of days here. Um, and then we're just waiting on the surety mount, uh, surety bond from them to allow for a construction start. We will also work to get information out there to the public in regards to construction um, and the timeline. I believe they intend to go um, as uh, stated by, the, uh, or as, as provided by the variance um, in regards to the timeline. I believe they intend to use all that time because of the late start. So that's uh, all that I have for right now. All right, any other reports? <clears throat> all right, we'll go to general business. First one is discussion and possible action regarding brewery road. So I can start this one off and then I see we have Brian Burkfuss and Jerry Gray with us. They can feel free to chime in whenever uh, you want. Um, so the issues with the Brewery Road um, sanitary sewer mainline has been known for quite some time. Um, I believe in, in the early 1990s, uh, there was a inspection of that sewer line and at that time was, was already deteriorating. Um, and I believe uh, that the, the plan was to um, repair or reconstruct that sewer line as part uh, of any future development in 2018 after the flood. Uh, it's my understanding that when we went in to repair the brewery road, the decision was made at that time to leave everything else, everything underneath until, um, so to be able to coordinate that with, with uh, the demand for a potentially larger sewer line or water line there. Jerry or Brian, do uh, you want to go into any more detail than that in regards to the history? Uh, just to quickly add, uh, as part of that study from the 90s, uh, the village has done a, a number of facets of the recommendations of that study uh, in pits and pieces, as is often required. Uh, so the, the upgrades, both in size and in depth, as well as water tightness, uh, now all exist all the way to the treatment plant. Uh, new large diameter, low, low elevation PVC pipe uh, with that last bit going up Brewery Road uh, has been intentionally left to the end, uh, partly because a large part of the, the need for it is hinging upon new and additional development upstream of that area. So we're uh, getting closer to that, certainly with uh, the proposed and conceptual developments. So given, given that history and then culminating with the pre-crossing and potentially Sundance in the future, uh, there's a 
recent testing of the uh, uh, lift station um, at St. Francis uh, show that by the full buildup of the creek crossing at St. Francis development, we would be pretty close or if not at full capacity for that sanitary sewer line. Um, and I'll let Brian kind of talk about the, the details there in regards to full capacity. I, I think we need to lay it on the table. Here, here's what our dilemma is and why we have to deal with this. We've approved two preliminary plats for our lane that uses that sewer line. It does not have the capacity to uh, accept that from both those development. So what we have here is we need to, if we want to move forward with these developments, I think we've already signed off on both of these. I think it's not appropriate to turn it down now because we did take this into consideration when we made the decision on that, that this needs to be done sooner and later to accommodate those preliminary plats that we have uh, approved. Plus on both of them, we're looking at um, where there could be potential expansion of those areas for development. So we need to get the infrastructure to uh, handle that. So, I mean, we can go on to everything else, but let's just call it like it is. That's the bottom line. That's the situation we're in right now. So with that being said, uh, as part of your packet, uh, you did receive the spreadsheet. One, the, the first proposal uh, that we have on at the top of the page here, uh, we'll consider no borrowing and then spending down uh, the, the sewer reserve uh, funds, primarily sewer support and sewer depreciation, and then utilizing um, the ARPA funds with the American Recovery um, fund, federal dollars to help supplement that. Um, again, that would be no borrowing, but it would be uh, using up the funds, so there's some risk there. Uh, the second option here uh, is to borrow on the sewer side um, and to have that be paid back by uh, connection fees from currently being repaid by the tax increment district. Um, so wanted to put that all on the table at this point. Um, get your thoughts, uh, questions. Yeah, Let me, can I just, I just want to explain a little bit on these. What we tried to do is come up in a way that we would not increase the general debt service or increase um, what would be either sewer rates or anything that. We try to make this cost neutral. So the first one, uh, option one, basically takes all our reserves, um, not only from the sewer district, but also from what we're gonna be getting from the Federal uh, CARES Act uh, from the pandemic. Uh, option two, what it does is it'll save where we're not bringing down all our reserves in the sewer district and it's also saving some of the money from the CARES Act that we could use to help keep uh, our regular budget, our debt service down, or even pay off some of the items with cash instead of borrowing. And the sewer district is in, of all the areas that we have, the sewer district's probably in the best financial shape. Um, not only are, is the kid going to start making payments from the loan that it gave out, but in 2025, one of the biggest debts of the sewer district will be uh, done, which is uh, the plant. So option two gives us where we're not draining down our reserve, because if we do that and then something happens and we're going to end up borrowing anyways, but now we're just borrowing from the sewer and we've lost all our money from the feds that we have some say on where they go. So those are the two options uh, that we have. We can borrow and not increase sewer rates um, with that option. Okay, go ahead. Well, I was gonna say, and just wanted to add here, it assumes uh, that uh, 
construction costs for the streets and the base courses will, will be covered by the sewer utility since the sewer, sanitary sewer main is the driving factor here. Um, water main will have to be covered by the water utility and, and Kevin from Johnson Block will be talking about that um, as the next agenda item. Um, again, wanted to bring this to the village board's attention. Um, as it sits right now, uh, depending from this, this conversation, we'll, you'll see this added to the, the capital improvement plan and capital improvement budget. Currently, I do have it in there as, as planning in 2022 and then uh, implementation in, as a 2023 project uh, to get ahead of um, any potential issues in the future. Judy? Um, my only question is where it says the 325 at three and a half percent over 10 years. Where are we getting that three and a half? That's not what we're paying now. ETF. Oh. I just took ETF because you don't need any clearance. They automatically won't get that. That was the last three. But that seems really high. It is high. Oh, yeah, it, it is, is really high. high. I was going to yeah, say, it I mean, is we high. should not be at, okay. Well, I, I wanted to, okay. I know we could get the money from <laughs> ETF. Okay. Yeah, but you're right. Yeah. If you went to bond it or something, it would probably be under 3% or around. Oh my God, I would hope two in today's world. What, what did you get? I don't know. But yeah, we'll, we'll, have to, we'll have to consider. It's just an example. Okay. Oh, okay. I, did it very I, thought, I just thought that was in stone. I'm like, oh my God. No, no, okay. no. no. Yeah. Any other? Hey, Jay. Yes, Phil. <clears throat> so, so the ARPA, that is funded by the state? Or by the federal government? That's the federal government. Yeah, That's what we'll receive from the Fed. So if we borrow, we're going to receive uh, about eighty-six thousand dollars less from the federal government. No, no, we are getting four hundred. Oh no, no, no. Okay, wait. No. So if you look at if you look at a on the top one, ARP is two hundred thirty-six for streets and one hundred fifty for a storm sewer. For the bottom one where we borrow, we're only seeing 150 for ARPA for streets. And that's 150. The, okay, that's because I want I want to keep some of that money so we can put it towards other things. We're getting 454,000 or 448,000. So the top one spends it all on this project. Option two spends uh, two thirds of it, leaves a third for us to put towards other items. So we have that uh, extra money. Okay. Um, well, we've already got that money. We're not borrowing anything from the feds. That yeah. money we already are getting. Okay. And then just just to, to take out a loan to not spend money seems like it's not efficient. Well, I guess my thought is we've committed to putting a shelter in Xander Park. We we spend a hundred thousand dollars on uh, new roads and maintenance. All that that money from the feds could be going to that. Then we wouldn't have to borrow in the jet against the general fund, which I think is something we're trying not to do to bring down general debt sewer. We would increase their debt, but they have a mechanism outside of sewer rates to pay that off. So you're borrowing it, but who's coming to pay? If we use it all up and we file for those other projects, then it's the tax levy that's paying for it. This way, basically, it's a loan, a re loan payment that's paying for it. Okay. All right. I appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, well, let me just get. So, Bill, you said this was going to be planned in 2022. So then we'd come back and see what the road construction uh, blueprints would look like and all that stuff. And yeah, so so yeah, right now we're just uh, again addressing the issue that's been that right. is there, bringing it to your attention, um, and then the details we'll have to get into that later part of 2022. Yep. Okay. Um, 
are you trying to figure out how you want to finance this tonight? Are you are you looking no, for an answer we, from us? I, I would like us to decide one or the other. Okay, that was, so that's, that's we my question. need to work on on that. You know, I don't want to. If we're going to go with one, then we will take the federal money off the table and keep it in an account until we need to spend it. If we go with option two, it gives us about one hundred forty-eight thousand dollars to spend towards things that would fall under the general fund. Right. Um, so then pretty much the main difference is we would be borrowing money from the TID and the TID, and so we'd be repaying the TID? Or how no, is we're borrowing, the sewer district is borrowing the money. I only said that instead of using sewer rates to pay back the loan, you know, the borrowing, we're getting the TID, we'll start, even this year, start paying back. So we can use the money that is being paid back to offset the, the, the oh, volume. I got you. The TID is repaying the sewer. Correct. That's what, that's where I'm, I got it now. Yeah. The TID is repaying the sewer and we're going to use those repayments to pay for it. Okay. Yes, yes exactly. And that way we're not depleting our support or depreciation accounts. Yeah, I, I'm fine with this. If you want to keep the, the money in reserve, since the TID is going to be repaying the sewer, it's just moving through there and then we're keeping a reserve in place. I'm absolutely fine with that. Kevin? Yeah, regarding the, the payment of the, using the TID to pay that, is it is that all right? I mean, it just seems like we could do that, but we, when, every time we looked at the TID going into the black, we like thought we sort of all licked our chops and thought, you know, maybe there's something else on board too. No, Kevin, are you doing? I, well, I'm asking Jay. Yeah, um, the first what, what we've agreed with the TID is the first thing they're going to do is pay off the, right. the loans that they have to the sewer district and to the general fund. And then the capital that builds up there rolls into that. You know, we'll build yeah. up. Yeah. Unless we use it for something else. I guess that's what I was pointing at. Yeah, the using it for something else part of that. So I mean, this is it's a shell game in essence. We're just taking it from here and putting it there. Right? Overall, it's going to cost us about sixty thousand more, right, to borrow this money if you put it over ten years. I. Well, I mean, it depends on the rate, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. But your your scenario here would be about sixty. So, a sum there's going to be some additional payment, obviously, for borrowing it, right? Correct. Huh. Yeah. All right, that's one question. And then two, I just wanted to go back to the to the beginning. Um, are, so let's just say Sundance doesn't happen for whatever reason. Sundance doesn't happen. Does the need here still? Is there still the need here to do this in the next two? Or three years. Well, Brian can answer. My understanding is the current creek crossing, when we put in the new pumps, when the pumps are activated, we're at capacity with those. Just the creek crossing. Correct. All right. And, and I guess part of it is we all know that those houses along brewery have had uh, backup. So I think getting more capacity should help help that also. But I correct. Uh, that's a very succinct way of putting it. Is uh, all of Creek Crossing goes to a pump station, uh, every house, and that pump station will need some upsizing. The developers paying for the pump upsizing, but those larger pumps will when they turn on and they're going to run. You know, they're going to run an hour every day total or something. They will use up your available capacity in Brewery Road uh, so that uh, either Sundance or if the Xander, uh, the remaining Xander family land is developed, uh, that next first house on, on paper would, would need some additional capacity. It also does build in, uh, you have had, in addition to the 2018 flood, uh, which blew, blew all the capacities off everything, you know, anytime you, you're flooding your sewers, uh, you have had uh, a snow melt event that also surcharged and really stressed your sewers. So uh, to your answer to your question, uh, is this project needed in two years, even if Sundance is not uh, executed? It, it wouldn't be needed as much, but if you do have a snow melt or a flood, this additional capacity would, would help attenuate those impacts and Brewery Road itself, uh, as Bill mentioned, was repaired in a in a temporary fashion after the 2018 floods, with the idea that at at some point in the next 
I don't know, Jerry, if this is the right number or not, but at some point in the next 10 years, Brewery Road is going to need some type of rehabilitation itself. Just the roadway is not going to survive beyond that period. So like any remodeling project, the dominoes fall fairly quickly, and that's kind of where we are right now. <clears throat> Okay. Yeah, I guess uh, how far out Brewery Road is this currently, or or and then is it planned? Does it stop at Laufenberg, or does it keep going? How like how much further past Laufenberg? Hilltop, Hilltop, all the way to Hilltop. That's where it is now. No, isn't it? No, I thought yeah. that's what they said. Hilltop to Valley Street. I don't. Yeah, it'll be down to it'll be starting at Valley. What's what's the yeah. northern what's the northern uh yeah right uh, now Laufenberg. Right now, the northern end of village owned right away is a couple hundred feet past Laufenberg. The, the folks on Sundance would pay for any work going north of there. So, Michael? So then the sewer lines under Laufenberg are fine. Mm -hmm. they, they, they with the pumps kicking on, they aren't going to have issues. Well, that's the pump. Everything in Rothenburg goes to the water pump. And, yeah, that's but it gets pumped out of there. So those right. lines are fine. It's when it hits brewery is when it's under right. capacity, is what I'm asking. Yes, that's correct. That's correct. Okay, thank you. Andy? Yeah, I had a bird that I viewed 2018 of my neighbors on brewery and they got it pretty bad and I just want to do it right this time and I would just generally prefer not borrowing um, that so I would, I would go with option one if, if we're trying to make decisions. That's just my two cents. All right, just so you know, we, we're still going to be borrowing. It's just where you are borrowing it from. Yeah. Either the sewer district or the general fund. Yes, clarify then I would select option one. So now I have a question. When you say we're going to be borrowing this, we're basically just depleting the sewer reserve funds in option one, right? No, okay. I'm going to try. There's, let, there's $448,000 coming from right, I the federal government. Right. Okay. Option one takes all 448, puts it to this project. Right. Option two takes 300,000, puts it to that. Leaves 148,000 to go against, let's say, the shelter in uh, Xander or maintenance of roads or reconstruction, because we usually borrow 100,000 for that. So we could take that and pay for it without borrowing. So you're looking at the flexibility of lowering your borrowing in the general fund versus doing it in the sewer district. That's the two difference. Um, like I say, I, you know, Bill basically did that uh, too. You know, I, I think it's, it's a, my feeling is the residents went through the pandemic, staff did a great job of managing it and stuff. I guess my preference is not to take all that money and put it into one project to take some of that money to benefit the, the whole community in a visible way of saving them the, on the tax levy or getting a shelter or something like that. Hey, so that's what was the motivation for that. Hey, Jay. Go ahead, Bill. So, so kind of back to what Mike was saying or, or asking was, um, right, we're gonna borrow regardless, but whether, are we going to raise, are we gonna raise, is, taxes on our on our, our uh, village people or are we not going to do that because it sounds like if we use option two we don't have to raise taxes because there like you said there's a mechanism that will take care of you know, the, the sewer rate right so it seems to me that we're, we're going to borrow regardless we might as well as not affect the town residents or the village residents uh, as much as we can my opinion. And that was the thought process for coming up with option two. Yep. That, correct me if I'm misreading this. Aren't we borrowing the same amount from the rates in both options? When, okay, when, when he's saying borrowing, we're, yeah. we still have to borrow 
for general obligation that to do the roads. It's not borrowing per se. He's basically saying in option two, we're going to have to take out general obligation debt in one hundred fifty thousand dollars less, right? Yes, uh, that, that's what yeah. he's saying. So, like, so, we're gonna, five. so at some point we're going to go out and maybe have to borrow seven hundred thousand dollars. And option two, we're just. We would only have to borrow 550 because we're saving $150,000 by using the TID repayments to the sewer utility to pay for this. Well, the 150 would be the reduction would be coming from we use the federal money. Exactly. To so, so we would have to borrow 550 versus 700. Whereas in option one, we'd have to borrow the whole entire 700 because we didn't save because we aren't using the TID repayment. Now, I want to be totally clear. You could choose not to do any road repairs and yeah. decide not to do, you know, obviously there's always that uh, discretion not to, but I think we want to maintain. The reason we're kind of in this is that we have not been real good at maintaining infrastructure. We're not, you know, that's very common because it's costly. This is just an opportunity to get it where we can get this done and have some cash to help with offset, maybe an increase in the tax levy and not, it's not gonna raise sewer rates, you know? So we're gonna get this, hopefully the way both of these options go through, we're gonna be able to go through and people won't, well, besides the water, the water is neutral, right? Both won't have the borrowing on water because you don't have the flexibility with the water district, we have to go to the PSC. So take that aside. I'm not talking about that'll be borrowed no matter what. But what besides the water rate increase, when neither of these are increasing, you know, the sewer rate or um, borrowing from the general obligation for this project. Not that we're saying that we're not going to borrow anything. For general obligation. Okay. Okay. All right. So I, I guess so. Just so we get don't have to redo a couple motions. I just want to do a straw poll on where people are leaning, so we get the right right motion. If everybody's comfortable with that. All right. What are, what are you leaning towards? Either one is fine. Okay. It needs to be done. I would be open to either one. All right, Andy, you're still with one. After a little clarity there, I think I'm also going to defer to the more experienced members of this body, but I'm leaning towards one that I think I'd be a case All right, Michael. I mean, I'm fine with either one. If it's just saving a little bit of information there, that doesn't bother me that much. All right, Judy. I just want one quick, quick clarification. Okay. So like, and just for rounding numbers. So we're going to get like the 450,000 and we are using like the 300. If we go up with option number two, we'll use 300 of it, keep back 150, just for rounding sake. Yep, yep, yep. So then my only thing about that then is where it does say on there for the 325 at three and a half over 10 years, that 325, why, are, okay, so, I'm thinking it should be 150 rather than 325. Why no, I screwed up. It should be 340. Oh no, no, no. Sewer, no, it'd be sewer depreciation, which is wait a minute here. Why are okay, you okay, it's a hundred thousand plus the two hundred and twenty five. The hundred thousand for the towards the street. Okay. And two hundred and twenty-five thousand towards the sewer man. Okay, there it is. So yeah. two, three. Okay. Yeah. Okay, nope, then I'm, I'm telling you. Um, I'm, I would lean towards number two if it's not three and a half percent, right? <laughs> <laughs> I would lean towards that, but that's too high for me. All right, but, yeah. but I believe. Uh, same with Judy. All right, uh, I, I'm personally uh, would be for option two. I like the flexibility and I don't like draining the counts. So, yeah, I will make a motion to. Um, Put forth option number two. All right, do I have a second? second. Oh, okay, second. I have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? All right, uh, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same. Thank you. We'll start working it out. We'll look at it. I just did what ETF did on that.
All right, discussion and possible action regarding the 2021 water rate case application. Kevin, it's all yours. Sure. Um, I just wanted to give um, just an explanation of the process of it and um, tell you what's included in it and if there's any clarifying items. Um, so we've basically completed the application um, based on um, what I, I think I just will have one clarifying question regarding the brewery road on there. Um, but I, I just want to start with what the process is. And the PSC, um, when you're requesting a water rate increase application, you ask for a water rate increase, they send you an application. The application is an Excel template that they designed. Um, and it's got about five different worksheets that are in there. There's some informational items in there. There is a lot of data requested for customer bases and you know volumes and then operating expenses. And um, I guess the third main component is, is um, what utility infrastructure is going to be added in. So we completed that. And, and when I was here giving the audit presentation, or you know, um, when we were here doing that, I gave a little bit of an overview in terms of what was included in there. But the application is filed. Um, and then it goes to the Public Service Commission, where it'll sit there for a couple months, potentially. Um, and then they ask questions. And so what you ask for in the application is not necessarily what it's going to end up being. Um, we've done enough of these that um, you know we're trying to anticipate some of the things that they'll, they'll be asking questions on. So when we file the application, um, that you know the rate it, it calculates a rate increase request um, that's on there. So um, the thing that we've got in the, the application is there's a, um, a couple phase increase that they have. There's a step a phase one and a phase two increase. They ask for phase two. Um, or a step two increase is for any potential major capital items that won't be completed or finalized until after the test year that we're doing now. So the test year that we're asking for is 2022. Um, they don't usually start taking applications for uh, 2022 um, requests until about now. So um, the process can take with the Public Service Commission can take, you know, six to nine months. I think I mentioned that the last time that I was here. We, you know, had just, I'm um, working on one right now where I think we filed the application at um, early March and we're looking at um, August in, in terms of when they turn things around um, where, where rates will be in, in effect. So that's, you know, a little bit about the process. So, um, some of the significant assumptions that we've got in there is we basically took your existing customer base and added in 20 customers um, for next year, 20 new customers that are going to be in there. Um, the operating expenses that are included within the application are based primarily on your budget with some modifications. And we did include $33,300 in there for um, water tower repainting, which was an estimated $500,000 project amortized over 15 years. So we requested that, um, or when I say we requested it, it's in the application that we've got designed yet. Um, the plant additions that we've got um, are the well three costs of you know 2.35 million with um, 68% of that being utility finance and the rest paid by uh, impact fees. Um, okay, that, it, 
I'm reading that a little different. That's how it is, right? Because this sounds like 68% yeah. are being paid by impact fees. And it's, I know that seems way too much. No, it's, it's reciprocal. I, I should have said six, I think it was 32% was paid by impact fees and 68% is utility finance. So I okay. wrote that wrong. So um, the well two costs of approximately $1.2 million are included in the phase two application because our phase step two request because our understanding is, is that the, um, that won't be completed until 2023. Um, Brewery Road, um, my, my understanding is, is that, it, and I know you just had the discussion on that, is that going to be completed 2023? That would be our hope. Okay. So it, it's a request in there for that. And I, um, I know I'll have to do uh, a little bit of a modification on that, but um, the, uh, because you said the 100, or uh, the, roadway and all of that stuff is going to be absorbed by the sewer and I think we That's split right. it we split it in there in terms of what I've got in there right now um, at um, at least in the application that I forwarded to you was the, the dollar amounts that we had in there were more than the three hundred and forty thousand dollars that we were talking about but anyways that's going to be requested into phase two in, in phase two um so the effect on rates i mean it depends you know it's also dependent upon the the um rate of return so the the application comes back and it's got a pre-filled out rate of return what the public service commission um asks for which is 4.9 um percent we I, I know in the last application we asked for a little bit lower. I think they may have ended up coming back with the 4.9% increase um, anyways, but uh, the main reason we were doing that is because your cost of borrowing, particularly on the, the well three and well two project costs that you were gonna be asking for, it was anticipated that the, the interest rate was gonna be um, less than um, what you would get on the open market so that you can make an argument for a lower rate of return. I mean, the, I mean, and what you're trying to balance there is the impact on um, utility customers. Um, so, um, so when we fill out the template, I mean, it's um, you know the phase one rate increases anywhere from 22 to 28 percent, depending upon what the rate of return comes back at. Um, the phase two is about 34 to 40%, again, depending upon what the rate of return is. And, um, you know, there's um, obviously, and I just have to caution that, I mean, because PSC reviews, asks questions, they, you know, and when they come back with their revenue requirement and all that, they'll identify what what it is we asked for and what it is that it, they ended up granting. And sometimes those are different numbers. Um, but, you know, we tried again to base it off of realistic, um, you know, your budgeted numbers um, for the operating expenses, your current customer base for your revenues, the engineer's estimates for the plant costs that are included in there. The one thing, you know, within, uh, you know, I'll, I'll point out within the, um, you know, the Brewery Road, if you're talking about potential development in there, we didn't include, I mean, in, you don't ask for that in the application or we'll point it out, but um, the there's no revenue growth projection in terms of no, number of customers that are filled in in the application. The only customer growth that we've got, like I said, is 20 residential customers for for next year. Um, and then I know when I was uh, talking with Bill about, I mean, that there was information regarding uh, you're looking at um, potentially getting rid of the irrigation rate, um, which we can just request. I mean, that data that you have for a number of customers in the irrigation rate is included in the application. If you wanna eliminate that and just go to an additional meter charge, that's fine you just request it. So, um, so with all of that, I mean, I, I mean, 
like I said, we're pretty much ready to file the application. Um, given that, you know, you've got some financing considerations that um, when you close on your um, well, which um, based on the timing that I were, we were hearing that was going to be spring of next year, um, that, you know, it behooves you to get the application process going. Um, if there's information that changes from the time we file the application till, you know, the time the PSC looks at it, you can always provide more information afterwards. But I guess what I'm looking for is just, uh, you know, authorization for us to file the app, the increase um, with the Public Service Commission. Um, I guess one final step in there is that once everything is ready to go, there is a public hearing um, where uh, usually it's it, it's held over at the Public Service Commission and done remotely here because they wanted a chance for utility customers to um, you know be able to come to the village hall and um, be heard rather than to have to drive all the way to the Public Service Commission. Um, so that will occur before uh, any rates get put into effect. So that's my spiel. Yeah. Is there any negotiation with them on that rate of return? 4.9 seems like a pretty high rate of return when you're talking about borrowing, you know your set payment. Yeah, it's not like that's gonna move up and down. No, I, 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 I've had success with that in the past in terms of asking for a lower rate of return, and um, I would, um, I would, I mean, when in a lot of the projections that we were working on in the past, I had given four percent um, as a rate of return, and that's if you go below that, it, you know, but it they may question it. And really, I think one of the things that there um, could be sensitive in this in, in, in terms of, you know, I just in terms of talking to some of the other financial consultants that go out there and work with the markets is they feel like um, it's, we're in an environment where interest rates are gonna go north, if anything. So, um, you know, that's not, yeah, that, that, that's not my profession, um, and you know, a lot of people make and lose a lot of money on that. But they are low now. Um, if by the time that things change or the the rate gets um, the rates start getting implemented, and if the environment is different than today, then you know, I think the last time we went in for a rate increase application for the for the village, the application. Um, the filled in amount by the PSC was 5.5%. And then they lowered it um, because rates were starting to go down. So, um, well, I mean, in the application, we'll say we are requesting a lower rate of return than what is prescribed because, and, and the main reason is, is the cost of capital is for you would be less um, than what um, current market conditions are. So. Bill, do you have any questions? Bill, yeah, so yeah, because I didn't, I'm, obviously I'm, I'm not there tonight, but <clears throat> can you repeat what the phase one and phase two uh, rate increases uh, proposed on the application, please? When we ran phase one, which was um, off the top of my head, I want to say operating expenses were somewhere in the neighborhood of, you know, uh, several hundred. 300,000, um, does that sound right? Or is it higher than that? But the main thing is, is it included the um, well three costs of $2.35 million. We were looking at an increase in the neighborhood of 22% if we could justify a lower rate of return to 28% if it ends up being a higher rate of return. Um, the phase two increases, which is with the well two costs um, of 1.2 million, that was gonna be um, getting up to 
34% to 40%. Um, and and, and it, uh, again, it also included Brewery Road. I'm sorry, um, it included that also. Um, but so, that one may be a little bit trickier to, to um, quantify because I'm not sure if they're gonna allow like with Brewery Road any revenue would, um, base increase, which to me would seem to make sense, but they're always hesitant to be overly aggressive with revenue adjustments on there. And so. just to be really clear, we're 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 not take, we're not saying thirty four to forty percent above and beyond the twenty two to twenty eight. We're saying overall, after overall, it'll be thirty four to forty percent. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Michael. So, when now I have a question. Now the utility charges both the monthly connection fee and the usage when you're saying like a 25 percent increase is that being applied equally to both halves of that equation or is it weighted there, there's, there's three main components in the in the um utility revenue there's the fixed charge which is the meter charge there's the volume charge and then there's there's your public fire protection charge um the assumption would be is that um, when I, when I indicated that was that 34 to 40% is, or the 22 to 28 is the entire pie. I mean, and sometimes that pie gets split up differently. And, and when I say that, um, you know, a lot of it is, um, generally speaking, you know, your public fire protection charge is, um, is something that is, you know, whenever you've got things that are, are put in there for either storage or well capacity, sometimes that those can push that up more proportionately than, than others. But the Public Service Commission will do a cost of service study to analyze that. Here, you've got a direct charge for your public fire protection customers. So it, that's actually based on your meters. So, um, you know, as a utility customer, when you're looking at your utility bill, um, you know, the meter that you owe um, or have, um, you get a, you get the, the meter charge for getting the water through there, and then you get a public fire protection charge also. So, uh, bottom line is, is it, or what I guess I'm trying to emphasize, and I, I think a good thing to look at would be your last rate staff exhibit. Um, they do a chart which says, you know, what it'll be for a typical residential customer, a large water user. And, and sometimes those rate increases could be, you know, the 40% could be, could end up being, 45, 50% to a residential customer and 30% to a, a, a commercial customer. That, that can't happen. And, and a lot of it is just based upon the mix of, you know, of, of what you're doing. So when I'm throwing these percentages out there, you need to keep that in mind that, um, you know, it's, it's not going to be um, necessarily proportionate. Um, equally across all customer classes. Um, the Public Service Commission will determine that. So really what we need, to, what we're really asking for tonight is just to at least do a motion just to um, submit the application. We don't know the rest of the story until after the application is had. That's, that, that is correct. Really to get yeah, it, it's going. to get the application going. And, right. and you know, and I, I just, um, and I, I'm trying to explain no, all the different. I, mean, I appreciate that. Yeah. yeah. No. I think it's important when you give it what's in the application. Right. Yeah. So no, totally you know what you're kind of voting on. Right. Mm -hmm. no, totally. So I. Calvin and then Michael. I guess I guess I wish we had, had known. Well, it sort of sort of seems like a chicken and egg thing here, but when we voted on the impact fees, um, the proportion of in, percentage of impact fees, I guess I wish we had had more information, maybe that time because when the impact fees change we change the percentage that percentage would change in the application and therefore the the rates would change the proposed rates 
Yeah. Yes. Yes. I mean, and I, I know I was working with, uh, you know, your engineers and I, I mean, it, it, we had a meeting or a couple of meetings with the Public Service Commission in regards to that. And impact fees can be a tricky thing because um, when you decide on the impact fee, um, what you're doing is you're saying X percent of it is going to be recovered through impact fees. The, the PSC looks at that and says, okay, all of that plant is contributed, so you don't get rate recovery on that. And there, I, you know, the cautionary tale is, is that some can, some places can end up, if the development doesn't occur, um, you're left having to service the debt without having any impact fee money. And that, that can, that can put a strain on me on municipal water utilities, which has happened. Um, so, um, and we did have, if you remember, we had that discussion yeah. of picking a percentage because it's right. kind of a, a guess how many houses are going to be built over the next 10 years. Yeah, we had this discussion, but we didn't have what a rate, phase one and phase two rate increase request would be. No. Based on different percentages of impact. Well, we did, well, we had a a chart, remember it had, uh, we did have a, a matrix that did show kind of that. Now what we didn't know is exactly, and even now, you know, they've got $2.3 million, or it could be 2.5, it could end up 2 million. I mean, there's so many things that you don't know until you get there. Yeah. yeah I believe when we talked about impact fees, we didn't have the well two cost and we didn't have the yeah, that that was, and, and you also didn't have the water power painting in there too. Um, so, but I think I think the water, the painting of the water. I think we did talk about that, but that's more village wide. And why should just the new residents pay for the, the painting of the, the tower? I mean, that's oh, that that shouldn't be that that shouldn't be in the impact fee. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. <laughs> No, but I, what I meant is when when I was doing some initial analysis on rate rate impact, Correct. you know, and I was talking with uh, town and country on that, and um, we didn't that was that wasn't this um, we didn't discuss that then. So, all right, Michael, you had a question. Um, yeah, I did because I had sort of asked about the irrigation rate, and that deals with our rate. We charge more for water that's used in an irrigation rather than water that's used inside for showering under our current schedule. So with the elimination of the irrigation rate, would those equalize is what would happen? I think what you would get is an additional meter charge. Um, with, which the irrigation right now does charge the, the, the additional meter at the regular rate is the it, it charges at the regular rate. It seems that most of the communities that, that have an additional meter charge, it's like half of what the, the what it is. And then it doesn't have a separate volume rate, which is I think a little bit higher than what you're normally or, or, or now. So but, I, I think hmm. that definitely needs to be, we can't do that. For that. Yeah, and that's tied to phase two anyways, right? If I look down here, we, we can request elimination of it. Your... Okay. All, all I'm saying in that is, is that the, the part of these um, things, uh, the re request is, do they want, does the village request any other changes to its rate design? Oh, uh, and and I, I think, I think in our initial application, we put no, um, but based on what I'm hearing um, when I was talking um, with Bill on this is that you may want to eliminate the irrigation rate and get an additional meter rate and you just ask for that, so. Yeah, we have zero discussion on that, so. Okay. I, I, I'm not comfortable putting that in without knowing what we're putting in. That's just my feeling. I don't know, Michael, if you were asking for that to be put in or not, but. Well, I was just curious since we're dealing with the rate case. I mean, I know you wanted to discuss it looking at the irrigation rate, which I I had sent out to some people. Pretty much our irrigation meters in town, there are about 180 customers, of which 
maybe 40, per 40 of them, 30 of them hit the, hit the volume of water through to where it makes it profitable for them, whereas they should just have their irrigation meters removed in general and not pay for the additional meter. It's just whether or not we want to, because because we're basically just charging for uh, the hardware installation and, and the water utility. I mean, and the ratio seems to be on a, like in 2020, it was like $29,000 of irrigation income came in. Looking at the audit and breaking it out with the numbers that I did, of that, it was like $24,000 was from the irrigation meters being installed and 5,000 was just the water usage through it. And that's just because the irrigation meters, the cost is so high on them and no one's, it's, it's, it's just a strange phenomenon that I find. Um, if, if you wanna discuss that further down the line, I, I, you can, I, I, I would suggest that that doesn't hold up the filing of the application. And I just simply say, the village is exploring the possibility of eliminating the irrigation rate and wants, wants to explore the differences between having an irrigation rate and an additional meter charge. Um, and they can probably lay that out for you. And the discussion that will occur at the time that they come back to us with queries and questions, and um, they, they probably will want further clarification on that, but that may be months months away. So you've got time to discuss that, I, I, I would suggest so. All right. So do I have a motion to, oh, Andy? Well, yeah, based on what I just heard, I would move to uh, approve the report and authorize staff to submit the application. I'll second. All right, I have a motion and a second to um, approve uh, sending in the uh, 2021 water rate case application. Any other discussion? Just a quick clarification here. Uh, Kevin, when you had uh, said that um, in the current assumption, there are 20 residential, new residential customers. Mm -hmm. um, and so does that get applied over the two, the two years of the two phases or does that get adjusted in the test year? Um, I, I think it was 20 additional from what we currently have. Okay. when we got the data from, um, you know, I, I think Bobby had compiled most of that data and it was based on stuff in your April. So, so. All right, any other? All right, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say So move. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you. Have a nice night. Yeah, you Thanks. too. All right. Future agenda item. Well, size law irrigation. Right. Thank you. All right. Um, oh. I'm, I'm querying to see if there should be any or not. Maybe you can. Me, but I heard both that we approved some dance and that there's still some hurdles. And that I, I guess I'm not sure. I know that in Europe, I think we. The current permits. I don't know if that needs to be on our agenda or if we just wait until it comes. It, it will be coming on our agenda. I think okay. uh, what has happened is since they're using both the same engineer, he's been extremely busy with pre crossing oh, and he's moving forward. It's at, coming, it's on, so yeah, but to answer your first question, yes, the preliminary plot has been. Approved back February of 2019. It was approved before the state statute changed. Correct. That's uh, why I guess it's okay. Yeah, I what I, state statute? I think the, sta the statute has always been there. Okay. All right. So if if it's not coming back shortly, we'll put it on for a review to update yeah. to where it because there's been a lot of activity on that one too. Yeah. All right. Do I have a motion for adjournment? Second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say. Thank you very much for coming tonight. Appreciate it. Have a good evening.